Welcome to a guide to every deck in EDH. Today we're looking at Evelyn the Covetous. So Evelyn the Covetous is a Grixis commander. It is five mana in various combinations of black hybrid mana and is a two five with flash that says whenever it or another vampire enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of each player's library with a collection counter on it. And once each turn, you may play a card from exile with a collection counter on it if it was exiled by an ability you controlled and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. So we're not going to be interested in the vampire synergies of Evelyn. We are primarily using it for its own ETB trigger by itself entering the battlefield. So what are we doing with this deck? Well, we are a Grixis value slash combo deck. So what exactly are we doing here? Well, under the various categories of cards, let's look at them first. So we've got our card draw in Ad Nas, Bolus of Citadel, Careful Study, Looting, Frantic Search, Mystic Remora, Necropotence, Peer into the Abyss, Ristic Study, and Wheel of Fortune. And the cards that put cards in our graveyard is going to be relevant because we have combos that involve reanimating stuff from our graveyard. We've also got all of our fast mana, which we're going to need to get Evelyn or other combos online as fast as possible. So Burnt Offering, Sack a Creature, and then add a combination of red or black equal to its cost. Calling the Weak, Sack a Creature to add four. Sacrifice, Sack a Creature to add X. Black, where X is the mana value. And then other fast mana in Rite of Flame, Lotus Petal, LED, Jeweled Lotus, Dark Ritual, and Cabal Ritual. And then all of our ramp, which is various flavors of mana rocks alongside Dockside Extortionist. We've got our counter spells, which includes various blue counter spells, as well as Deflecting Swat and the Red Blast. Cyclonic Rift is a sweeper. We've got all of our various tutors, and we're gonna wanna tutor a lot because we're a combo deck. So Beseech the Mirror, Demonic Tutor, Entomb, Gamble, Imperial Seal, Mystical Tutor, Spellseeker, Tainted Pact, Unmarked Grave, Vampiric Tutor, and Wishclaw Talisman. And then we've got our reanimation effects, which are going to be relevant for what I'll show you in a moment, but it is Animate Dead, Dance of the Dead, Necromancy, and Victimize. And then finally, that leaves us with our combos. So how do the combos work? So there's various combos in the deck. Some of them are pretty normal for CEDH. So for example, Thassa's Oracle can combine with Demonic Consultation or Tainted Pact to exile our entire deck and then cast Oracle. Or Dockside Extortionist can potentially go infinite with Baron Master Wizard. Baron Master Wizard is a 3 mana 1-1 one, one that says 2 mana sack a permanent return target creature to its owner's hand. So we can use the treasures that Dockside makes to sack the treasures and mounts the Dockside to our hand. So it requires that our opponents have a certain amount of artifacts and enchantments. We need 2 mana to cast the Dockside. We need two mana to activate Baron, and we need one extra treasure to sacrifice two Baron. And then that alone would be neutral, so we need one extra card that's an artifact or enchantment on the field so that we can net mana for each iteration. So in order for Baron, Master Wizard, and Dockside Extortionist to go infinite, we need our opponents collectively to control a total of six artifacts or enchantments, which they won't always have, but which they will have often enough that this can combo. Then of course, we've got our Underworld Breach combos. Underworld Breach can combine with various cards to go infinite. So primarily this is gonna be using Lion's Eye Diamond as the fuel for the cards in our graveyard. So we've got Underworld Breach, Lion's Eye Diamond, and then we either need Wheel of Fortune or Brain Freeze. So if we've got Wheel of Fortune, we can pop the LED for triple red. We use that to escape Wheel of Fortune from the graveyard, which causes us to draw and discard a whole bunch of cards. And since we're drawing and discarding seven cards at a time, that will always give us the necessary fodder in the graveyard to escape both Wheel of Fortune and Lion's Eye Diamond while having one card left over. So we can do that and then escape basically our entire deck using Wheel of Fortune as long as the amount of cards in our library is at least equal to or greater than seven cards. Once we get down to, to six and lower, we can't cast Wheel of Fortune anymore because we'll die but that should be enough to churn through most of our deck and then eventually just find Oracle and win the game and then escape Oracle back from the graveyard. Or we can use Brain Freeze. Now we can Brain Freeze ourselves to generate the mana to, or to generate the escape fodder for Brain Freeze and Lion's Eye Diamond. So we Brain Freeze ourselves storming off and milling over our entire deck. And then at that point, we can just cast Oracle to win the game since we've milled our whole deck or we can brain freeze out our opponents to mill their entire deck and then just pass the turn and let them deck themselves. And those are the usual Underworld Breach combos. Then in addition to that, we have our World Gorger Dragon loops. So World Gorger Dragon is a six mana seven, seven flying trample. None of that's relevant. The only relevant part is its other two abilities. 
When it enters the battlefield, you exile all other permanents you control. And when it leaves the battlefield, you return the exiled cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So if you have a World Gorge or Dragon in your graveyard and one of our enchantment-based reanimation effects, such as Necromancy, Dance of the Dead, or Animate Dead, we can, for example, let's say Animate Dead is the card. We Animate Dead the World Gorger Dragon. The World Gorger Dragon enters the battlefield and triggers. It exiles all of the other permanents except for itself, including the Animate Dead that is reanimating it. Since Animate Dead leaves the battlefield, it triggers and causes us to sack World Gorger Dragon. World Gorger Dragon then dies, and the death trigger returns all of the exiled cards, including Animate Dead, which can then reanimate World Gorger Dragon. So we can loop this over and over and over. And since all of our permanents are entering the battlefield untapped, it means we can keep floating the mana off of our lands and whatever mana rocks that we have to generate infinite mana off of this. We can then use the infinite mana that we're generating to cast Evelyn the Covetous from our command zone. Well, when Evelyn enters, it triggers and it exiles the top card of our opponent's libraries. Then, because this is a permanent on the field, the World Gorger Dragon combo is going to also exile and re-enter Evelyn over and over and over until eventually our opponents have exiled all the cards out of their libraries, and then we can just pass the turn and kill them. Now, there's two big downsides to the World Gorger Dragon loop. The first one is that our opponents can interrupt this loop. So they can kill the World Gorger Dragon with its leaves trigger on the stack or with its... Yeah, so when this enters it will have the, the exile all of our other permanents trigger. Now, if at that point, our opponents kill it, so they like swords to plowshares or whatever with it on the stack, it'll then die and the leaves trigger will go off. The leaves trigger will resolve, but since we haven't exiled any of our permanents yet, nothing will happen. Then we'll exile all of our permanents and now the World Gorger Dragon is gone and we never get them back. So it's risky. So you got to make sure that you have protection for this or that you're reasonably certain that none of your opponents have any sort of instant speed removal that's going to interact with this. The second issue with it is that if you don't have a second creature in your graveyard, then the Animate Dead or Dance of the Dead or Necromancy World Gorger loop will just keep going off infinitely over and over and over because it will keep reanimating the World Gorger Dragon. And this ends up in a mandatory loop where it keeps exiling and re-entering over and over and over, drawing the game. So you must have another creature that you can choose for Animate Dead or Dance of the Dead or Necromancy so that the loop isn't mandatory and you can actually stop the loop in order to win the game. But thankfully, Evelyn the Covetous has Flash, so we can always cast Evelyn, allow it to go to our graveyard, and then not put it back in the command zone to make this the other creature that we get. So even if there's no other creature in any graveyard, we can use Evelyn to be the second card. Then on top of that, we also have Isochron Scepter and Dramatic Reversal. This is the old Dramatic Scepter combo. Dramatic Reversal, untap all nine land permanents you control. Isochron Scepter, imprint an instant with value two or less, and then pay two and tap it to copy the exiled card and cast it without paying its cost. So if you have Dramatic Reversal and Isochron Scepter, you imprint Dramatic Reversal. And then as long as you have non-land permanents that can add mana, such as Mana Rocks, and you have at least three mana worth of Mana Rocks, you activate the Isochron Scepter, casting Dramatic Reversal. It untaps the Scepter itself along with your Mana Rocks, which results in you having even with neutral or more mana than you need in order to keep activating the Isochron Scepter, so you generate infinite mana that way. And that can allow you to cast Evelyn or potentially just other cards to win the game. Now on top of that, we also have Displacer Kitten. Displacer Kitten can be used to exile other spells that we need. So for example, if we have Displacer Kitten and Evelyn plus other spells, we can use Displacer Kitten to blink Evelyn the Covetous, or we can use it to blink our Mana Rocks. So like if we're casting certain spells, we can blink our Mana Rocks like Mox Opal, Sol Ring, etc., and keep generating more mana depending on whatever it is that we're casting. Doesn't actually go infinite, but does generate a ton of value, although it will go infinite in certain combinations of cards like Dockside and whatnot. And those are our main combos. Now, some other things to note, Bolas' Citadel allows us to cast spells off the top of our library without paying for them and by paying life equal to their mana value. This is very good with Sensei's Divining Top because we can always put Top back on top of our deck using its own ability and then the Top itself is only one mana or rather one life in order to cast with the Bolas' Citadel. So we can always just keep putting the Top back on top, drawing a card off the Top and then casting the Top for one life. It's technically not infinite, but it does allow us to pay one life per card. And of course, if any card on top costs less than one, such as our zero mana rocks, we can cast those for free as well. On top of that, like in the Arami deck that we discussed at another point, we can use Scholar of Ages plus a reanimation spell 
plus a sacrifice ritual in order to generate infinite mana. So if we have Scholar of Ages, which gets back two instants or sorceries, plus a card like Sacrifice, Culling the Weak, or Burnt Offering, we can use Victimize as the second spell. So we get Scholar of Ages into play. We get back, let's say, Sacrifice and Victimize. Then we go Sacrifice, Scholar of Ages, generating a bunch of mana, Victimize another creature, whatever creature that is. And then we get back the Scholar and the other creature that we sacrificed, putting both of them back into play. Scholar triggers, puts both of these back in our hand, and we can loop that over and over. Because Evelyn the Covetous is our commander again, we can always have Evelyn the Covetous as our second creature. And then we, by reanimating that plus the Scholar with the Victimize, we exile our opponent's libraries and win the game that way. Some versions of the Bolas Citadel top combo will also play Aether, Aether Flux Reservoir as a way to... Uh, gain life when you're casting spells, which is actually infinite with Bolas of Citadel. This version does not play that because we have enough other combos, but you could slot that in if you wanted to. And that is the basic breakdown of what the deck is trying to do. There are probably some other combos that I didn't go over, but those are the main ones that matter. Of course, there's all sorts of little synergies like Necropotence can use to pay one life to get the top card of our library to be different when we have Bolas of Citadel. You can, of course, use fetch lands to change the top. You can use any other draw spell to change the top, etc., etc., etc. Lands are pretty straightforward. It's all the various Grixis lands you would expect in a deck like this. And then utility lands that you'd also expect, like Odawara, Mystic Sanctuary, etc. And that is the breakdown of Evelyn the Covetous.